Hello. And I want to say welcome to everybody that came out tonight. Uh, just before I get started, um, thank you again. Yeah, just thank you. So my presentation is the importance of space and the ability to create it through sidechain compression. Now, before we actually talk about sidechain compression, we have to talk about a couple other things. So what is space, first of all? Space in a mix is depth, so how we hear things. Uh, so it's really kind of an illusion, because usually most music we hear is in stereo, so right and left, but we can create it through a few different things. But why do we need it? Well, really, you don't. A lot of great music was made in mono, so meaning single channel audio, like the Beatles. Uh, there's lots of great music. But it's important because it's how we hear. When I'm speaking in front of you, you hear the sound coming in front of you. Someone next to you speaking, you hear them next to you. These kind of things are what we're used to, so I, it's really important. So ways that we can create it are delays. So if you have sound coming straight at you, it can be delayed so it can be off a little bit. So it'll be like a quarter of a second on this side before you hear it on the other side. Then we have panning, which is also similar, but the sound is constantly going from direction to direction. Reverb is space, so my room has this, this room has a little bit of reverb right now. So it's a little bit of the echo. So that's what you would think about if you're thinking about reverb. And then finally, my favorite, sidechain compression. We can use that to control all the ones above it. So sidechain compression is technically a ducking effect. It originally was used in sporting events. Uh, it's basically under the, so if we had music playing, the human voice would be above it. And instead of having to fade it all the time, they would use sidechain compression. Uh, nowadays, they use it for like pop music, where they will take the vocals and put them above the music or certain spots. Though the most, I guess, important to me or most popular way right now is to make room for the kick. The kick drum is a very potent thing in music and it's very important to a lot of popular music styles. Uh, the, it also leads to different effects. This is some of the tools that we use to create sidechain. This one right here is called a noise gate. It has a threshold and a release. Uh, this one right here is something that is new to the scene. It's called kickstart. It's basically a compressor, but smashed together. And so when we talk about sidechain and the importance of space and the tools that we use to create it, you may be thinking, OK, I said all these words. Now what's it really mean? So sidechain compression, have you ever, have you ever listened to music, I guess, if you've ever listened to music, sorry, if you listen to dance music or you listen to hip hop or pop music and you hear that bass that goes boom, 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 that side chain, it's like a door. So when the door is open, the sound comes right through. But when the door closes, when the kick comes through, it causes a pulsing effect. And that's what side chain compression is. And right now, I just want to show you a couple of examples of what that is. So I'm going to start with the pul a pulsing effect. So music can sorry, music can be pulsed through different ways. And this is the compressor that I'm going to use. Uh, side chaining has a threshold. So we take the threshold here, and that causes how much it pulses. So right now I have a white noise effect, and you can hear it pulsing. And so the noise is just pushing back and forth. It's open, close, open, close, open, close. And you can use that on synthesizers, on pads. Uh, white noise actually is really popular in electronic music for what they use it for. The more I change this, the less it happens. And you get more of the noise, and it brings it back. Now, that sounds all in good, and it's kind of an isolated example of it. When we listen to music that we usually listen to, this is an example of what the bass line would do. So you can hear it's kind of just pulsing back and forth. Uh, a lot of these tracks are called ghost tracks. So the actual sound that's pulsing it is the kick drum. It's not actually playing. 
It's just, I guess, how can I say this? But it's, it's just pulsing. It's pulsing, it's, it's repeated, it's on the one, two, three, and four. Uh, it's not actually coming out of the mix, but it keeps the glue together of all the things. To show a more practical, complete usage of it, I made a little example. Um, it kind of sums it up. It's not too complicated, but it sounds very fun. So I have the bass side-chained. I also have the lead side-chained. And so the things that are side-chained in that one are not just the kick, but also the snare, the cymbals. So every time the cymbal or kick drum plays, it's the loudest thing. So everything pushes back. Again, that door is opening and closing. Uh, through this, it's kind of the basis of sidechain. It's how I create space on a lot of my tracks. When I'm going to play for you an actual full track that I created for this example. So a full track created for this example. This is my track environmental. So it's title environmental, the story of two lovers who are kind of finding themselves in each other. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. You fight through the atmosphere. I need to keep you near. And where and where I'm drawn to you. Your hair through my fingertips. I want to kiss your lips. Yeah.